Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of this newsletter is going to be just asking for drama and trouble. Well, I've got two emails that I'm going to go through here with you, and the situations are pretty messy that they're involved in. And I want to talk, because this is really, really an important part. If you want to simplify your life, if you want to have a good quality life, free of drama, free from conflict, because there are people in this world that are a hell of a lot of fun to hang out with. You have a great laugh with them, you have a good time with them, but they're just not good people to be around. And there are women that you can date. If you're a guy looking to date women, there are plenty of women out there that are drop dead, gorgeous, beautiful, great in bed, you'll have an absolute blast with. But they're just a pain in the ass to be around. They're just full of drama, they're toxic, their friendships are toxic. And it's like every time you talk to them, you're going to hear, oh, oh my God, you're not going to believe what happened to me. I'm sure you've probably had people you met in your own life. It seems like every time you talk to them, they go, oh my God, you're not going to believe it. I had a guy that was a business partner with for many years and we were friends for many years. And it's like every other time he called me, he was like, oh, you're not going to believe what happened to me. And he'd go on for about 45 minutes about this kind of long, drawn out story and all this conflict that was involved and how he had to threaten somebody and, and it's like when you – because I've always I've been studying human behavior since I was in my teenage years and trying to understand why people do what they do. I've been studying self-help, personal growth and what I, I, I learned from him because I, I knew him for a lot of years was that when he grew up, his father, when he came back from World War II, he was pretty messed up and so he drank a lot and so pretty much just about every other night of the week – his father and his mother literally were beating the crap out of each other to the point where they were both bloody and the police would come, take the father away, take him to jail. He'd sober up and in the morning when he was sober, they'd give him, give him a cup of coffee because it was a small town. They'd bring him back home and it was kind of like the same shit. And so he was always – his dad was always beating his ass. And so he literally grew up in an environment where he always felt like he was getting ready for a fight or having to defend himself because that's what he saw his parents doing. So that's what he grew up. That's what he became emotionally conditioned to expect in his life. And so that became the filter. That's the filter and the way that he looked at everything in the world. And so whenever he felt like something didn't go his way or somebody potentially slighted him, whether it was one of his own kids, his wife, his ex-wife, one of his business partners, one of his customers, everything his filter was, I'm getting ready for a fight. Oh, there's going to be some kind of conflict and there's some kind of drama. And the way he would carry himself was that he literally would look for it and he would create this problem and this conflict in his life. And after being in business with him for many years, I just got fucking tired of it. So did my other business partner. We just got – we were over it because it was just constant drama, just constant pain in the ass. He was, he was either pissed off at me or he was pissed off at my other partner. Or he was pissed off at both of us. And very rarely was he getting along great with the two of us. And when that happened, it was for a very short period of time and as you get older and like for me growing up in the environment that I I grew up in I had a low self-esteem for a lot of years and so I would put up with a lot of bullshit like that and we were making a lot of money together we had a very successful business and so obviously I didn't want to lose the income that I had nobody did that and so a lot of times I ended up compromising my values and going along with things that I really didn't want to just so I could stay in business with these guys and then I eventually just got to the point where I was fucking tired of it because it was constantly violating myself, violating my dignity and violating my own rights in order to stay in business with them. And once I finally stood up for myself and was just like, I'm over this shit, the business partnership disintegrated within a matter of weeks. And at that point, I was no longer willing to compromise my values and put up with that bullshit. Even though it was a very difficult and painful experience getting out of business with these guys in the long run, it's, I, it's like what I the business I have now is, is wonderful. I have myself and I have three or four people that work for me and they're all independent contractors and when I have them do something for me, I pay them for what they do and it's nice. It's nice not to have 40 employees working for you and dealing with 120 grand a month overhead and all those kinds of things and my overhead is very small for the business that I have and the income that I make is almost as mu exactly as much as I used to make when I was in real estate with all those headaches with two business partners which is like being married to two other people. And having 40 employees, it's just – God, it's just so nice. I'm so fucking grateful 
that I get to do something that I love for a living and I don't have somebody constantly in my face trying to tell me I need to be a certain way or think a certain way. I shouldn't do this. I shouldn't do that. Trying to get me to live up to their unreasonable expectations. I had a guy that was a best friend of mine for many years. He was the best man in my wedding. And this guy was a blast to hang out with, but he was just a fucking dick. And I remember when I was 21, I was saving up my money to buy my first new car. And I think I had like three or $4,000 saved up for this. And he needed some money because he was moving. He got kicked out of his house, out of his mom's house he was living in. We were both 21 at the time. And this guy was very successful. He was a good looking dude in great shape. Girls just went bananas over him. And, he, and this was like when we were 21 years old. And so during the, he was a male model. And so during the season down in South Beach where he did a lot of his work, I mean, he, it, was, it wasn't uncommon for him to make 10, 20, 30, $40,000 in a month. But he was doing drugs. He was doing coke. He was drinking a lot. He was very self-destructive. And he completely took everything that he had for granted. And so I ended up lending him 3,500 bucks to help him get into this place. And it took me like six, eight months to get my money back. It, basically, he ended up giving me his Harley and he put it on in consignment to sell it. And I ended up having to take it out of consignment because after three or four months, I still hadn't sold, fixed it up, and then I put it in like the auto trader and the thing sold like within two weeks. And it was just a fucking pain in the ass. And then I remember when we were, I was in my, my late 20s and I was really, really doing well. This was like 98, 99. And I bought my first exotic car. I bought a Lotus Esprit V8. A twin turbo, 350 horsepower, just fucking gorgeous car, red. It was fucking beautiful, man. And he and I were roommates. We were living together at the time. And so I, I drove it to work the first day I had it. He had driven down with me to Palm Beach Motor Cars because we were living in Orlando to get the car. We took a, a one-way rental car down there, dropped it off at the, the rental place, bought the car, paid for it, drove back. I took it to work the next day. And he's like, oh, let me take it to work. I was like, sure, man. So I let him drive it, and I, a couple hours later, I get a call basically telling me he fucking wrecked my car. And why, how did he wreck it? Because he's fucking hot riding the fucking thing all through the development where he was a, a sales agent, and there was some sand on the road, and you know the, the engine was the back in the car, so the car literally spun out, hit a light pole, snapped the light pole. It was a concrete light pole. Snapped in half. Luckily, the light pole fell away from the car instead of on top of the car because it would have killed both of them if it had, you know, fought, cause it was a fiberglass car basically. And it took me like three or four months to get it back. And he was like, oh, don't worry. I'll help you get it. You know, I'll drive you down there to get it, blah, 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 when it's ready. And he never fucking followed through on anything. And after many years of that, he even came to work for us at one point for a couple of years. And then he left on really bad terms. He was working underneath one of my business partners. And after that, I was just like, you know what? Fuck it. This guy is just a pain in the ass and he's just a fucking dick. I had another, another guy that I lived with several years ago. When I got out of the real estate, I was living with, with a couple other friends of mine. And this guy was a blast to hang out with. He was one of the funniest people I ever met in my life. And we had a great fucking time together. But he was just a fucking scoundrel. I remember one time he was, had, he was dating this girl at this time. And we were all sitting out in the living room. And he comes out of the garage with a pair of channel locks of mine. which was something that my grandfather had bought me when I was a little boy. And I'd had this all these years. And so I had a lot of sentimental value to me. I was like, those are my channel locks. He goes, no, these are mine. Straight face, look me right in the eye. And so after like three or four minutes of talking to him, he finally admitted, he's like, well, yeah, they are yours. And I took it out of your toolbox. Because I went out to the garage and looked and the, tool, the toolbox was open. My tools were all in a mess and, and my channel locks were gone. And he's like, oh, don't worry. I'll, you know. And he just basically like left and, and took off with him with his, with his girlfriend. And it took me like a month to get the fucking things back. I finally ended up calling his girlfriend. I was like, hey, you know... I'd really appreciate if you bring those back because my grandfather got those for me and he's long since passed away and they mean a lot to me. And she's like, sure. And so she ended up bringing them back. And I remember another time, this guy, he tells me this story because he used to work for a builder. This guy had so much talent and he had so many gifts and he was just a fucking scoundrel. He went to work for this, this home builder and was very successful working for them. as was like a superintendent. So they ended up trusting him with their corporate bank account. This guy embezzled like a quarter million dollars out of their business bank account. And I guess he covered it up well enough to where they really couldn't prosecute him or, or press charges. And he was laughing about it. Like, hey, I pulled one over on these guys. Oh, they're a big builder anyways. You know, fuck them. I deserve to get that money. It was kind of his fucking attitude. And I was just, 
and I was introduced to him through another buddy of mine. I was just like, I remember when we all moved out of this house, he, he's like, because I wasn't really hanging out with him. I was just really trying to avoid him because he was just, he was a fun guy, but he was just dishonest as hell. There was another time there was some money sitting on the counter in the kitchen and he's like, who's this? I was like, I don't know. He just, well, oh, mine now. And he just fucking grabs like, dude, that's, that's somebody's money. It's either yours, mine, or one of the, one of the other guys. And it's just like, Fuck, man. It's like some people are just like that. I remember another time I was when I was a platinum partner with Tony Robbins. You talk about you know good quality, what you think are high quality people. It's like what's important is that you got to objectively look at people. You got to look at their actions. There was this young kid in there. He was from Sweden. His name was, I think his name was Christian. Good looking dude, just charming as hell. And he was talking about how he was going to, you know, he had all these pictures of his girl was a famous actress i don't even remember her fucking name very beautiful girl he's telling everybody that that's his girlfriend and he's doing movies and stuff like that he's an actor he's a screenwriter he sold one of his screenplays for a quarter million dollars to hollywood and and so he's like starts in getting other platinum partners because you know there were a lot of people with money that were platinum partners in there to bankroll his movies and like one of my buddies who was a platinum partner he got a got a hold of his american express number and so he gets his bill there's like sixty thousand dollars charged on his his american express and this guy like defrauded i think several of my platinum partners out of almost like a half million dollars before people realized that he was just a total fucking scoundrel but everybody trusted him because tony was like hey he's this great guy even tony was introducing this kid to a bunch of his friends and one of them pulled him aside and said this guy's a fucking scumbag i don't want anything to do with him he's like how could you not how could you not see this like I had a girlfriend years ago that was like that. It was a beautiful girl. I mean, I loved her so much. The sex was great. I had an absolute blast with her. But it's like every time I hung out with her, it's like half the time was spent listening to her talk about her girlfriends and, and the fucked up relationships that her girlfriends were involved with. The girls that she worked with, it was the same thing. Her boss was constantly fucking around and her husband and two or three of the other girls that she were working with. It was the same kind of fucking drama. And these are the people that she was hanging out with. You're just a bunch of fucking losers. And so it's, the quality of your life is going to be in direct proportion to the quality of the people that you consistently spend your time with. That was something I learned from Tony many, many years ago. And it was true. And so it was like because she was constantly hanging out with people who had relationship problems. And these are the people that she would go to for advice about us. It's like, what do you think that had effect-wise on our relationship? It created a lot of fucking dramas and problems in our relationship. Why? Because that's what her friends are like. That's what her coworkers were like. And therefore, she brought this crap into our relationship. And I eventually got fucking totally tired of that. And so you got to be a strong person. You got to, when you see these kinds of situations, and yeah, you're, you, know, you really like hanging out with a person, whether it's a friend or a potential business partner, you really got to look at people's actions. It's like one of the things that Dale Carnegie said. He said, the older I get, the more I look at what people do and the less I listen to what they say. So you got to look at people's actions because – and you're going to see when I get into these guys' emails, it's just like, fuck, man. Why would you even fuck with stuff like that? And I know it's hard because you meet somebody and you really like them and you have this great connection with them. But it's like you see all these red flags and all this bad behavior that's going on in their lives. And you're like, holy fuck. So if like, you get involved with people like that, guess what? Your life is going to become just as full – of drama is there. It's like I had a, a girl recently that I was dating. I really liked her and, and we hooked up right away and she was, had similar goals, similar values. She does – she's a, a coach as well and it's like every time I, I try to make – we had another date set. It was – she canceled at the last minute or she'd be trying to change the plans, push the date back a couple hours. I'm going to cook you dinner and she'd brag about what this great meal is she's going to cook me. And she fucking – oh, I didn't make it to the, the store on time. It was like classic passive-aggressive type of behavior that I was seeing. And I just fucking blew her off. It was like I don't want to deal with that because I learned that lesson a hard, the hard way a long time ago, many, many years ago that that's just the way people like that are. They don't know any other way. They Like I was t talking about my old, my old friend, my old business partner. It's like he was emotionally conditioned to be that way. And even though he's in his 70s now, that's the filter. That's the way that he looks – at the world and how he experiences all of his relationships. So I got a quote that I wrote before we get into this first email. 
And it says, when we start dating people we like or start spending time with new friends, we should keep our eyes wide open to the true nature of their character. Attractive members of the opposite sex and people who seem cool and fun to be around can also be totally fucked up, toxic, and dishonorable people. You should never let your desire to have fun or your desire to be loved blind you to the fact that you are potentially getting involved with toxic people who are full of problems and drama. If you do become involved with them, their problems and drama will become your problems and drama because that is the dysfunctional way that they go about fulfilling their basic human need for love and connection. They typically don't know any other way. Be strong, mature, enlightened, and smart enough to spend your time with quality people. Because the quality of the people who you consistently spend your time with will determine the quality of your life. I, I Trust me, I, I implore you, do yourself a favor. When you see, If you've got friends in your life, or maybe you even have family members who are like, it's like every time you talk to them, it's like, it's like a big dump truck backed up in their life and just fucking dump problems all over their their front lawn and they all they want to do is involve everybody they know in their problems and their drama and it's just always like that. And you know what? It always will be like that. And if these are people that you're related to, bless them, send them love, but it's like choose it's like love your family, but choose your peers. Choose very carefully the people that you spend your life because it really will impact the quality of your life. So let's get into the first guy's email. He says, "Hey coach, since this time last year, up until almost two weeks ago, I've been seeing a coworker of mine. We'll call her Kay. She's 23. I had a girlfriend at the time, and we started seeing each other, but I didn't break up with my girlfriend until this past November. You naughty boy. You were cheating on your girlfriend almost two fucking years, dude. That is just not fucking cool. That is not an honorable way to be. It's not fair to her. And it's not fair to you, dude. Because you're keeping yourself from having the kind of relationship that you really want. And you know what? You're not giving her your full time and presence. You got to be a fucking man. If you're not happy in a relationship, if you know deep down and you always know, if you're with the wrong fucking person, I know it's tough and I know it's hard, but it's always better in the long run if you end things instead of cheating on somebody for years at a time. It's just not a fucking cool thing to do. Honorable people don't do shit like that. He says, During all that time, me and Kay fell in love, and when I finally broke up with my ex, we started dating right away. Well, you were already kind of dating and seeing each other, so maybe you're talking about you actually had an official label at that point. He says, I gave Kay the girlfriend label on Christmas, and all was going really well. So how come she didn't ask for it? It's always better if you let the woman bring the commitment up first. And the reason being is feminine energy is all about bonding, connecting. And most guys, when they talk about being boyfriend, girlfriend, being exclusive, they're usually doing it from the perspective of trying to lock the girl down, really because deep down they feel insecure inside. And it's understandable if you've been cheating – because when you're a cheater yourself, when you're cheating on the person that you're with – your filter of the world is that, well, everybody else is like this. They're just like me. They're going to cheat as well. And so therefore, that's what you expect. Since you're a cheater, you expect to be cheated on. And so therefore, the only way you really feel good about yourself is if the person that you're dating is probably cheating on you. And so therefore, if you can lock them down to a commitment, you feel good about yourself. But the real issue here is that your behavior, the way you're going about your life is dishonest. You're being, you're lying to yourself and you're lying to people that you're involved in a relationship with. And that's going to make you paranoid. And that's going to cause you to attract other people into your life who also will cheat on you and screw around on you. you got to become the kind of person you want to attract. And so if you want to have a faithful, loyal, monogamous relationship, you have to be with somebody who is a faithful and loyal person. Another thing, I had a girl I was dating recently who she was telling me that she cheated on one of her husbands. She actually cheated on a couple of the guys that she's been with. And what does that tell me right away? When she's not happy, she cheats. Commitment doesn't mean anything to her if she's unhappy. Instead of communicating and talking about it and doing something about it, she'll just go and seek fulfillment elsewhere. 
He says, we had a talk about my ex and she knew I was still talking to her, but she asked if I had seen her and I told her that I visited her twice at work to see how she was doing. The real reason that you're doing that is that you're having a hard time letting go of your ex-girlfriend. So you're kind of keeping your finger in the water almost as if you're trying to keep her in backup position. That's going to cause any woman that you're dating not to trust your masculine core. He says, and she didn't take that very well and she felt as though I lied to her because I didn't tell her about it before. Again, this is how you go about your life. You're used to lying to your ex-girlfriend and you're used to just lying in general and that's your way of avoiding drama. But when you go about lying to avoid drama, all you end up doing in the long run is creating all kinds of fucking drama and problems in your life. He says, Kay wanted me to cut all communication with my ex for a little while, but I told her I don't want to because I wanted to help her through a rough time and I just felt it wasn't the right thing to do. Come on, man. I think you're bullshitting yourself here. If your ex-girlfriend is trying to get over you, you being in her life and showing up at work and doing all those things is going to prevent her from getting on with her life. I think the real reason is you're just too weak to let her go. He says, so we broke up on New Year's Day. We spent two weeks not being official, but we still acted like we were. After those two weeks, she told me that she wanted to be my girlfriend again, which was the middle of January, so we got back together. I told Kay that I would tell my ex that I wouldn't be able to see her at all for a while, but I would still talk to her and be a friend. This lasted two days as she broke up with me again because she felt as though she couldn't trust me. Big fucking shock. What have you done to give her a reason to trust you? Been, she's been dating you while you've been cheating on your girlfriend the whole past two years. It's like, come on, man. What do you expect? She doesn't trust your masculine core because you haven't demonstrated anything to show over the past two years that you're a trustworthy guy. He says, because I still wanted to talk to my ex even though it was purely a friendship. Again, why? what have you done over two years to give this new girl any reason to think that you're trustworthy? Because women, they know. If you're lying to your, if you're cheating on your girlfriend with them and you're lying to her about all this fucking time, common sense that you're probably lying to her about all kinds of shit. He says, keep in mind, during all this time, her attraction level was a 9 or a 10, just all over me. Well, that's what you're thinking. Women don't dump guys who they're head over heels in love with, even if they're, even if they don't trust them necessarily. They, when they dump a guy, their attraction level is usually around a 4 or a 5. He says, not even a week later, Kay tells me that we can't talk anymore because she's dating another guy from our work who she knows I don't like. You got what you deserve, dude. So guess what? She was probably dating you and she was probably dating this other guy behind your back and you're just now finding out about it. You attract how you act, dude. You got to become the kind of person you want to attract. And so what you are demonstrating to the world and the universe is that you're a liar, you're a cheater, and you're dishonest. And therefore, guess what? It's like a big fucking boomerang. It goes, Whoosh. it comes and it hits you right in the side of the head. Guess what? You attracted your exact equal. You attracted a woman who was exactly like you. She was deceiving you and you thought you were deceiving both of these women. You got what you deserve. And he doesn't want her talking to me. I know I messed up because when she was telling me this, I was telling her we could work it out and then I loved her more than anything and I would wait for her. Of course, my attempts failed at keeping her. When we were talking about it, she was distant and cold. And when she left, I told her I loved her and she did respond with, I love you too, and I know she still loves me even if her friends admitted it. I saw her at work this past weekend and when I looked at her, she wouldn't look back, but I did say hi and she did respond. I want her back, but I just don't know where to go from here. Do nothing. Walk and never look back. If you want to if you want to have a good woman to have a good, healthy relationship with, you have to become a guy who's an honorable man. A guy who's not going to lie and deceive the women he's dating. And until you change that behavior, this is exactly the kind of woman that you're going to attract into your life. Is women that are going to literally match and mirror right back to you what you're putting out in the universe. He says, I just don't believe her feelings can go away that fast. Also, how do I act with her and the other guy at work? Act like it doesn't matter. If I were you, I would start meeting and dating other women and become a guy who's honest 
And who doesn't lie and doesn't deceive when you're unhappy in a relationship? Have the fucking balls to walk away from it and stop lying to people because this is exactly how your life is going to continue to be. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. So you can see over the course of two years how your lying and your cheating has gotten you. Well, you basically got cheated on with your new girlfriend. That's what really happened here, dude. So if you want to break that cycle, then I would walk away from this situation completely and never look back. If she ever calls you or texts you and you still want to hook up with her, she's a great fuck buddy, but that's about it. She's not – you should have an open relationship with this girl and, and have the attitude of she can date and sleep with whoever she wants. That's what I would do if I were her. If she reaches out to you, just be like, hey, babe, I'd love to see you when you're free to get together. Let her tell you and then make a date. Invite her over to your place. Tell her to bring a bottle of wine over or tea or coffee, whatever it is that you guys are going to drink and make dinner together. Hang out, have fun and hook up at your place. But in the meantime, if you want to have a good, healthy, monogamous relationship, then you really need to be looking beyond your current group of the people that you've been involved with to date. So let's get in a second email. This guy says, hey, coach, I'm a longtime viewer and this is the first time I'm writing to you. I've already got the Kindle version of your ebook and I've read it a couple of times. You're doing a great job. Thanks for everything. Well, you got about another 10, 11 times you got to read it to really get to know the information because if you don't know the information, you're going to be fucking up and you're going to be making unnecessary mistakes and making your life way harder than it needs to be. He says, here's a little bit of background on me. I am single myself and I've been dating a married woman. He says, I know I lost from the get-go. It's like, you know... You're already in a bad situation. And I've been having a great time with her. I'm 30, she's 40, and since her husband cheated on her and is still being unfaithful to her, she decided to seek happiness elsewhere. Well, what this tells me is she's not strong enough emotionally, mentally, spiritually to walk away from this relationship. It's a bad, unhealthy relationship. But you know what? People like this that stay in these kind of unhappy, unhealthy relationships, deep down they got self-esteem issues. They don't feel they deserve any better than that. Therefore, they stay in their relationship hoping it's going to get better because it's probably in their childhood they grew up being emotionally conditioned to believe and think that this is acceptable behavior. He says they are not sleeping together and he is pretty much away on business romantic trips all the time and doesn't give a thing about her or her whereabouts. I've got a guy that I know, he's a very successful attorney. He's one of the most successful attorneys in the country. Very, he's a multi, multi-millionaire. And he fucks around his wife all the time and they have an arrangement. His wife's an attorney as well. And if I told you who he was, you could look him up and go, holy shit. But I'm not going to say. And so he, to keep the public image, whatever it is, he bullshits himself, he bullshits his wife. You know, they've got kids that, you know, even a couple of their kids have become attorneys as well. And they're just staying in it for whatever the arrangement is, as he likes to call it. And he fucks around. He has girlfriends. He's like, hey, that's that's his life. That's his choice. I personally wouldn't want something like that because why would you want to come home and sleep with somebody in the same bed who you're not really hooking up with and both of you are, are actually seeking fulfillment outside your marriage? That's just fucked up. But this guy's involved in politics and he's – like I said, he's a very powerful, very successful attorney. It's just fucked up. I, it's a dishonest, disingenuine, inauthentic type of relationship. I personally wouldn't want any part of that. But you know, the guy's very unhealthy. He's overweight and he's just – it's a toxic way. He drinks too much. He's an alcoholic. He's got lots of problems. But he's obviously – He's a multimillionaire. He's just not willing to do anything about it. He's simply not miserable enough to do to make any changes in his life. He says she never gets a text or call from him, and they are basically together for the kid. It's like, oh yeah, just they are totally fucking up their kid's life. So the kid's gonna grow up and see the fact that mom and dad are fucking other people other than each other. And guess what? Now their kid's gonna go up, grow up, and become involved in the same dysfunctional type of relationships. How is that helping the kid out? What the kid needs is a healthy example to follow of mom and dad really being head over heels in love and having a good quality relationship. It's like people think that they're doing their kids a service by staying together when it's all a fucking bullshit lie. 
He says, we spend weekends together and we are together on holidays and vacations. He says, me acting like a pussy. Everything is fine, but the guy still bothers me. I know I have no right and I have no say in this, but I can't stand the fact that she sleeps with him under the same roof. They have separate rooms and beds though, but they're still under the same roof. So I start bugging her and nagging a lot, asking unnecessary questions, having already prepared a girly reaction to the answers like, how could you do that to me? It ain't about you, dude. It's about her and what she wants. But you got to – see, the problem is, is that in life, you need to see things as they are, not better than they are and not worse than they are. And what you are doing is you are seeing you, this relationship as better than it really is. You are her fuck buddy. That's the bottom line. You're not her boyfriend. You're her fuck buddy. And what you're doing is you're projecting your fantasy onto her and ignoring the fact that you're fucking a married woman and that you're involved in a bullshit fantasy. If you want to have a healthy monogamous relationship, it's not going to be with this kind of person because she's got her own issues. This is a woman to have as a fuck buddy, a sex playmate, an open relationship with while you're looking for a great woman to have a great healthy relationship with. So you need to see things as they are and I've just explained to you total bold, total bold honesty, brutal honesty if you will of the way things really are here. He says, I thought we were a couple. Well, you're bullshitting yourself. I'm sorry to tell you. He says, how could you have borrowed his car when you have your own car? You could have taken a cab or something like that. Yeah, you're acting like a woman. You're acting like a weak bitch, dude. I'm sorry to tell you, but you're not acting like a man. He says, I don't appreciate when men do that, but I became the man that I would normally hate myself and make fun of just two years ago. He says, we've been dating for two years. You've been her sex playmate for two years. You are her boy toy. As a single man, I can't date other women as you would normally recommend because first I promised her she isn't in a sexual relationship with her husband either. Second, while well, I'm in love with her. So hooking up, hanging out, and having fun is not really an option in my case. Well, you're simply choosing to go along with that bullshit. Meanwhile, she still lives with her husband and you're, you're just hoping that she's not having sex with her husband. So cut to the chase. The more I care and confront her, the more of a silent treatment I get from her. She ain't changing. It's like you got to understand, dude. It's like this is the nature of the person that you're involved with and nothing's going to fucking change. It's like you're totally bullshitting yourself here. He says, when I keep silent, she goes on and on, explaining herself to the point that I start feeling pity for her. And the moment I show compassion and the willingness to communicate, she shuts down. And then I am the one who starts talk the talking again. In other words, she gets me going. And as soon as I hit the start button, she backs off. It's like she's doing it on purpose. It's passive aggressive type of behavior. You, you got to love in such a way that the person you love feels free. And you have to accept the fact that she's married this is the way it is for her. She's staying in it for the kid and she's your fuck buddy. And if you want to have a healthy relationship, you got to say, look, you're with your husband and I'm dating you as well. And what I really want is to have a healthy monogamous relationship with somebody. And so let's keep hanging out, having fun and hooking up. And you can hang out and have fun and hook up with whoever you want. But I want to have a healthy relationship. I like to have a family someday. And obviously I can't have that with you. And you got to have the balls to tell her that. He says, the more I talk, the less she does. The less she talks, the angrier I get. The only person you have to blame is the person that you see in the mirror every day because you keep putting up with this bullshit. He says, so it all leads to me talking literally to myself and walking away. Sometimes I try to end my rattle, take a pause, giving her the chance to talk. But after a long pause... With a childish smile on her face, she would spit out something like, do you think it would be a good idea to open up our barber shop? I have always wanted to do that. While I'm still on the topic waiting for her to say something regarding my monologue. She's changing the subject is what she's doing because she doesn't want to talk about it. She doesn't want to change the way she's doing. And so you need to accept that this is the way she is and see the relationship for the reality of the fact that you're her fuck buddy, bro. Come on, man. That's the way it is. So things get ugly. I talk more, get crazy. He says, no violence though. It's a vicious cycle. She says she doesn't talk because she has nothing to say and that I already said everything. I feel like, no see, you're trying to change her. You're trying to get her to be different than she is other than 
the only thing you can really do is accept that this is the way this person is that you're hooking up with. I feel ignored by her keeping silent and talk more, so there goes the pussy act. When I give her a cold shoulder or cut all kinds of communication and contact with her for something she did or said, she works like a squirrel in a wheel. She texts, she calls, she comes, she can't sleep, she can't work. It's just me on her mind. When I give up and forgive her, she immediately runs away, moving on with her life and no more frequent texting, calling, and she's also busier somehow. You're pursuing her and you're acting like a fucking woman, dude. It's like you said yourself, you're acting like a pussy. Cut it out. You need to let her call you. When she calls you, you make dates over your place to hang out, have fun, and hook up while you're looking for somebody who is not involved in some bullshit relationship. I know you say you love her, but if you want to have the kind of relationship you really want, guess what, dude? It ain't with her. He says, all I want is to keep the texting, calling, missing, and visiting as frequent as it usually gets when she feels that she is losing me. Why can't she do it on a regular basis? Because you're pursuing her and you're acting like a woman, which turns her off. I can't just play the ignore game when she gets lukewarm. Okay, well, if you keep if you're happy with the results you're getting, then just keep doing that. What's the definition of insanity? It's doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. I know she loves me, but I am tired of her extraordinary efforts only after she realized that I might actually leave her. I know men are not supposed to do that, threatening to leave and test her women, but she only reacts to that kind of behavior. Well guess what, dude? The reality is, is if you do more of the kind of behavior that gets the results that you want, hello. But like I said, she's a cheater. She's not the kind of woman to have a monogamous relationship with. If I were you, I wouldn't call this woman. I wouldn't text her. I wouldn't do anything. When she reaches out to you, make a date. Other than that, you should be looking for a new girl who's single, who's available, that doesn't have all this bullshit fucking drama in her life. You deserve better than this. It's like, come on, man. You Do you demean yourself by staying with her? So if you'd like to get my help personally, the quickest way is to book a paid phone, Skype, or email coaching session with me. And you can choose any of those options by going to my website, click the products tab at the top of your screen, and just follow the instructions. And I will talk to you soon. 